Hi everyone, welcome back to another post-production tutorial. In this video, we're gonna look at how I use my Stream Deck Plus and my Colorist Icon Pack to supercharge my conforming workflow. We're gonna cover my latest tips and tricks, how I use the Stream Deck Plus to speed up my conforming workflow, and yeah, just get you up to date with how I conform in 2024. Let's go. Okay, so we're in a brand new project here in Resolve, and I've got a folder here with some media files and a 30 second offline reference clip of a girl walking through the park, nice and simple. And this is the sequence that we're gonna to conform today. So I've created three empty bins that are currently in my media pool, media, offline, sequences. And the only other thing that you'll need to follow along using this method is if we go up to the DaVinci Resolve menu, to preferences, toggle over to the user panel and the color sub panel. We wanna make sure that automatically Q is set to the maximum value here, which is 9,999. This will mean when I skip forward to the next shot on the color tab, it will skip to the middle of the frame. Resolve currently has no shortcut key for jump to middle of shot. So doing this is a little bit of a hack to make sure that when we queue to the next shot, it'll queue in the middle of the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here. So the first thing that I wanna do is I'll navigate to my media bin and the media bin on my media storage and just control A and drag all my footage into the media pool. Next, we'll want to import our offline reference file. I'm gonna to navigate to my offline media bin and navigate to the offline folder in my media storage. And you can see we have that here. In previous tutorials, I would have told you to go up to the top here, right click and add as an offline reference clip. This is still valid. I can go ahead and do that and link this to my timeline manually. But instead of doing that, I'm gonna select and delete. For now, I'm just gonna click and drag into the offline bin like a normal clip. And I'll talk you through why in just a little bit. So with my offline reference imported and all of my media in my media bin, I'm gonna hover over the sequences bin and hit Control Shift I to import my EDL. I'll navigate to my Forest Walk Conform Assets folder, click on the offline folder, and here is my EDL ready to import. Our load EDL dialog box will pop up. I'm gonna leave this unticked. And in fact, I'm actually gonna leave all of these settings as their defaults and hit OK. If you had any other media in your bins here, it's good to unselect that and just select the location where you want your EDL to point to. So to be safe, I'll uncheck everything and just check the media folder so it just points towards that location. And here we go. Clicking on my timeline, Shift Z to fill. Okay, and if I click and drag here, you can see that this looks like it's all conformed correctly. So the next step is to link our offline reference clip to the sequence and insert any audio that we have. Now, if we had imported our offline reference clip in the traditional way, we could navigate to our sequences bin, right click our sequence, timelines, and we would be able to see our timeline listed here and we could go ahead and link them. We're not seeing that on this list because if you'll remember in the offline bin, we've just imported our offline reference file as a standard media clip. To turn a standard media clip into an offline reference that you can link to a sequence, we're gonna click on the dropdown and change our left-hand viewer from a source viewer to an offline viewer. Now at the moment, we don't have anything linked, so this is gray. But if I go ahead and click and drag this clip onto our offline reference viewer, now you can see if we scroll through the timeline, you can see that this has successfully linked to the timeline. Now the reason why I've done it this way is now we can just use this as a standard source clip as well as an offline reference clip. So if I go ahead, change this back to source, this is a standard media clip. So what I can do is I can click and drag this audio down and insert this into my sequence. Alternatively, if I ever wanted to insert the video, I could go ahead and drag this in. There's no reason why I would need to in this case, but yeah, I like having a little bit more flexibility and having this as a standard media clip rather than a specific offline reference clip. Remember, we'll have to change it back from source to offline so we can see the file linked to the sequence. Now, the last thing we'll do before we get into the sync check is I'll go ahead to my settings, color management. I just wanted to point out that we're in a color manage project today. So I'm actually gonna quickly leap over to the color tab, enable my clips, shift click, and just set an input color space here. The footage here is sgamut 3 slog 3 So if I go ahead and select those, right click and update the thumbnails, that's looking a lot more healthy. The offline reference was also 239 to 1, so I'm going to go up to my timeline, output blanking, and just set that as 239 to 1. 
jumping back into my edit tab, here we go. We have our offline reference file on the left and we have our conform files on the right. And you can already see that we have a few differences here. There's a flop that needs to be applied on this shot, but let's start at the beginning. The most important part of the conforming process is the sync check. So we need to make sure that every single shot in the sequence matches what came from editorial. So this is their file that they've supplied to us. So this is our Bible. This is what we need to stick to while we sync check this shot to make sure that everything we see on the timeline matches our offline reference. This is where the Stream Deck Plus and the Conform Profile are really handy. I'll drag my cursor back to the beginning of the timeline and on my Stream Deck Plus, I'll enter the Conform Profile. There's two pages on the Conform Profile, one and two. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is hop over to the Color tab. The way that I like to conform is doing a full screen wipe between the first, middle, and last frame of each clip in the timeline. And that gives me confidence that everything matches frame for frame, that all transforms and scales and cuts are correct. This first dial here allows me to jump to the first frame and last frame of the clip, like so. This dial allows me to jump to the next shot and previous shot. And as we talked about at the beginning, because we have in the preferences that 9,999, this cues us to the middle of each shot rather than the first frame of each shot. Both of these dials have a secondary action of bringing up our offline reference wipe. So if we tap the screen here or push in the dial, our offline reference wipe will appear. The reason why it's not is I'll go ahead, flick to my other page here. We need to make sure that our reference wipe is set to the offline file rather than the gallery. So I'll go ahead and click the offline reference wipe shortcut here. Now you can see if we push on the screen, we are seeing our offline reference wipe. Go ahead and arrange that wipe on the screen. So by either pushing or tapping the screen on either of these icons, that will get us our offline reference wipe. These two dials have saved me so much time. Let me show you. So I'll start at the beginning and I either press down my dial or press on the screen here and that brings up my offline reference wipe. I'll jump to the last frame and do the same. So that's matching pixel for pixel. Now to get to the middle of the shot, I need to use my previous next dial. So now we're in the middle of our first shot. And again, I can just click here. Next, I'll jump to the middle of my next shot. Press once, press twice. That's matching pixel for pixel. Same here. Same here. You can see how quickly it is when it's just at the flick of a dial. Okay, this is the middle of the next shot. So it looks like we have a sync issue here. Let's jump to the first frame of the shot and check. Yes, we do. We'll jump to the last frame and check. And it looks like we may have a cut issue here. Okay, so that's another thing to fix. Let's jump back to the first frame. And there looks like there's a sync issue. So this is the online. This is the offline reference. So we need to make sure that these match. To do that, I'm going to go ahead, go back to my online jump to the edit tab and just zooming in on my timeline here we can see that in the offline reference she's a little bit further down the path than she is in the online now i'm going to go ahead and enable my source timecode so you can see in the offline reference we have a source timecode burn-in which is 37 34 15 and you can see the source timecode of the clip 37 33 21 so enabling my trim tool i'm going to go ahead and click and drag this clip forward until our source timecode matches. So again, we're looking here and here, we want these two source timecodes to match and then the footage should line up perfectly. So we're at 34.15, 34.15. Jumping back to my color tab, I'm gonna activate my offline reference and look at that, that's matching perfectly. Gonna jump to the last frame. Okay, so we have another issue. It looks like the cut point is slightly wrong in the EDL. So we're gonna jump back to the edit and let's have a look here. The left-hand dial on the Stream Deck Plus is a JKL wheel. So it allows me to play and pause playback, but it's also a dial stack, which means if I click, we can toggle between toggling by seconds and by frames. So I'm gonna go back to the start of this frame and we're just gonna jog frame by frame through this edit until we see the cut point. So again, our offline reference is on the left and our online is on the right. So this is correct and the cut point should occur here. You can see in the timeline, there's a little bit of a delay here. So we need to go ahead and click and drag this and make sure that the cut point aligns to the correct cut point as per the offline reference. 
Now if I go ahead and step through frame by frame, there we go, that's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and just turn off my source time code. Now you can see that we have a flop issue that we identified earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and close my media pool and open up my inspector. And clicking on our clip here, just zoom out a little. Clicking on our clip here, I'm going to go ahead here and flop our image. Closing the inspector. Okay, that's looking a lot better. Now as we scrub through, that's looking good. Solve two issues in one go. Perfect. So jumping back to the color tab, jumping to the next shot. Middle frame, correct. First frame, correct. Last frame, correct. Jump to the next shot. Okay, so a bit of a difference. The timing looks okay, but it does look like there's a transform applied. We'll go to the starting frame and go to our sizing palette, and we can start to make adjustments here in our sizing parameters. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to match a scaling adjustment using a wipe. Flicking between a full screen reference is by far, in my experience, the easiest way to make transform adjustments. Let me show you how. I'll take my mouse and hover it over the zoom X, Y, and clicking and not letting go, I'm just gonna flick between my offline reference and the main image. And I'm gonna do this plenty of times as I'm scaling. Okay, so I think it's probably around the 1.2 mark. Okay, so now there's just a Y adjustment that I need to make. So hovering my mouse over the tilt, I'm gonna to start to bring this down. And as I do, I'm just gonna use my adjustment here and I'm gonna keep on doing fine movements. What's really great about this is you don't need to let go of the mouse while you're flicking between the offline reference, which means that you can see really granular differences between the pixels. Now those edit sizes are complete. If I go ahead and go to the first frame, last frame and middle frame. Yeah, that's looking perfect. Skipping to the middle of the next shot, first frame, last frame, that's all perfect. And these last two shots actually have a stabilization applied and I know that from editorial, so I'm not gonna worry about that. The sync is looking good. If I wanted, I could check the source timecode start here with the source timecode that's embedded into the offline. And again, we've got a perfect match. Jumping to the next shot, Again, just checking the source time code. That's looking good. Source time code looking good. And again, I'm just really quickly bouncing between the offline and the online reference. And there we have it. We have fully conformed the sequence using the Stream Deck Plus and the Colorist Icon Pack. You can hopefully see how quickly it is, especially if you're dealing with sort of a longer sequence, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, two hours. You can imagine that a vast majority of the conform comes through correctly, but you still need to sync check it you can breeze through minutes of a feature film in record speed with the Stream Deck, especially if there's no issues. Obviously, issues will always take time to work out what's gone wrong, uh, maybe make a marker, follow up with editorial. You know, those things always take time. Using the dials to navigate is a game changer, and I honestly can't go back to conforming without the Stream Deck Plus. I do have a lot of other videos on conforming on my channel, so if this interested you, go check them out, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.